satisfying is it to turn a page from an old book into a signature for your journal or into a tag? How glorious to make ephemera from a single sheet of old paper. Book pages are useful in so many different ways in our junk journals and all of them are really fun to do. So in this week's video I'm sharing my five favourite ways of using book pages in a junk journal to inspire your own junk and art journaling and ways of playing with paper. And if like me you have a passion for paper and you love junk and art journals then hit that subscribe button, ring the little notification bell and we'll be able to catch up next week because I've got lots more videos and ideas to come. My first suggestion is to use old book pages as individual pages within a signature in your junk journal but I like to try to do that by making the most impact. So I've got four suggestions under this heading of using book pages as a page. So I have got here a selection of the books that I'm pulling from most at the moment and I just thought I'd share a few of these with you to say what's in my mind when I'm pulling the pages. So I'm using the Elizabeth Googe book quite a lot and I love that because it's got a smallish regular font, the pages are clearly aged and the aging is apparent around the outside of the page. So this is great for an individual page mixed amongst others and I like to include that to get the most impact with contrasting sheets from other books. So I've got a couple here that are also the same size but a little bit different. I'm using the Tempest at the moment and sometimes I colour that because it's a texture that will absorb paint and colour and also as you can see I'm getting an impact in my journal from these pages by exploiting the fact that they are contrasting fonts so a bit of a difference there and then I'm using this little John Donne book and I tear a page here and there and include it in, in amongst others and this one has um, verse in it so poetry and so the page is set out in a very different way from the text on the other pages. So to use things as individual pages in your junk journal you might want to see how you pull from your stash to get contrast. I'm also using this old encyclopedia which is absolutely jam-packed with pretty images of flowers and of animals. Some are black and white and some are colour and where they're black and white sometimes I paint them sometimes I don't you can see that the font is different so it's more blunt it's more positive and it contrasts very much with the other pages that I mentioned so first idea around using old book pages in your signature is maybe to use individual pages but to work them in a way where you're getting contrast. If they're not as dark as you want them to be, you can of course coffee dye them. And I'd suggest having a look at Mrs. Cog's channel and also Michelle Scott if you want to get some really great ideas of what pages could look like when you've done coffee dyeing or brought in some distressed kind of ephemera. You may also want to use your pages as a collection. So as a collection, in a way, that is part of a theme. and We've talked about themes being a way of motivating you and guiding you to have a really beautiful junk journal at the end of your project. So this is an art journal I put together, an art not necessarily for me to add the art but representing some kind of artistry within it. And what I did was pull pages from different books include them as a page as extra images as well so that the message the story and the theme of all of this was about art so using old book pages you can pull from different sources make your own journal in your own way make it your own but it can still be very impactful if you're including lots of different little pages around a theme so this little art journal, very colourful, very different from some of the botanical or vintage neutral ones that I've put together. This middle spread is a, a Lowry scene, so an artist from Manchester. And really I just enjoyed the collecting of those pages and putting them together and it felt like I'd made something merely by the integration of all the different components into the one. 
and it is a bit of a, a colourful little chappy. So using book pages in a way that is impactful as a theme. You can also use them as a tip-in. So in the junk journal that I've been working on as part of junk journal January, I added a page with one of the, I think it was one of the books, book pages that I have just shown you. I added it with washi. The washi I used was of the colour theme of the page. Uh, I wanted to break the colour. So what do I mean by that? What I wanted to do was have something that toned with the patterns and colour and collection of items that I was putting together on this page as opposed to having the next page being this whiter, colder, bluer set of colours. So here's an example of using an individual page, an old book page, as a tip-in, which is when you add an extra sheet into your journal that wasn't originally part of your signature. But the other purpose I put this to is to break the colour. I don't know if that's a phrase in junk journal land, but it's what I meant in, in my head. I wanted to break the colour so that this page would work with the muted tones. So I needed this vintage background rather than going straight on to the page of the junk journal that I had bound in the signature. My second set of suggestions is about the decoration that you put inside your journal, so using book pages to decorate. You can of course stamp on individual pages such as here and you could then include that page just as it is. You could, and this has been done with a an ink pad that is itself like an ombre effect, so the multicolour that's in this is from the ink pad. You could stamp on book pages and then paint them, which is what I've done with the White Knights palette on these irises, and that just comes from a pretty little foam La Blanche stamp. So it's not acrylic, you don't see it when you stamp, but it does seem to come with a very crisp outline, so it's nice and easy to use with a little black ink pad. Have a think about whether the paper will take the ink and have a think about whether the stamp you want to paint and it will absorb the paint well enough. So just think in advance to help yourself. And uh, This little grungy journal that I've been putting together, which is filling out now, I've got a, a little piece here from a book that I've stamped. I've got this little dragonfly motif just in black and white here but I've stamped it onto a book page that already had text on the left and I don't know why but there's something about over stamping onto text that just seems to add to a page and I like it. Let me know what you think. The other suggestion I've got for using book pages is super fun and cathartic for these cold days that some of us are having when we want to do something useful but we also want to be cosy on the sofa. So I make out of book pages as well as out of scrapbook paper tons of little flowers and if you're interested I can do a little video on how I do these. The ones that I think are most successful from book pages are ones that are have text on but have got a surface that allow me to then add colour and what I like to do is scribble on the page and then cut it up and convert it into five petal flowers and I think we know from our craft and artwork that odd numbers are really helpful visually on a page whether that's on a card, on a tag or on a journal page. So what I do is I cut out five petal flowers and they're incredibly easy. There's no template. I do it by folding and then cutting with a pair of scissors. Uh, you get better at it. It's fun, it's easy, uh, it's soothing and it's peaceful. So as you can see, as well as cutting out little circles, sometimes from scrapbook papers and sometimes from book pa pages, I have got a little stockpile here to pull from. And again, I would encourage you to choose pages that give you contrast, maybe fill a little tub so you've got something to hand when you want something and then you don't have to divert yourself to make it. Uh, but get your crayons out, get your 
paints out, get your glitter glue out and just play because the, the result is a gorgeous collection of stuff to add to your junk journal and the more variety you have, the more contrast you have, the more the impact, the more fun. The third suggestion is about making an impact using book pages on the cover of your journal. So I've got three examples here that I thought I'd just share to illustrate that point. Let's pick one. So Magic and Mystery. This is a Halloween purple, green, orange mixture of colours in a junk journal. And I obviously wanted something to... Ooh, he's a cheeky chappy. I obviously wanted something to speak to that theme on the cover so I rummaged through some children's books which are an incredibly useful source for putting in your junk journals and found this page with magic and mystery amongst other text so I pulled that out and added it to the cover and also obviously when you do add another sheet of paper to your cover you're making it that much thicker as well which might be something you want to do so at on top of the cover I thought I'd just add a nice little bit of organza ribbon because it then went with his little cape. So using a page from a book to make an impact that's consistent with your theme. Another example is this little fairy tale storybook style journal that I did. So I've got something to do with dreams and sleeping on the cover. Again pulled from an old children's book. Uh, and this one had a number of different pages in it from books and there's a collaboration artist that I work with in India and he very kindly shared this picture with me and I just augmented it with some glitter glue. So the theme of this one that I was able to add to through the cover, through an old book page, was all about dreams and magic. My fourth example is about using book pages to make tags. Now often the pages are pretty flimsy, so maybe you don't want to make the tag itself from the book page, but what I like to do is have it as that little bit of extra decoration, maybe layered on a tag so that you can have a really interesting set of features on that tag to look at. On this one, I've added it behind some scrapbook paper and I've actually stamped on it to give a little bit more interest and detail as well. So think about using your book pages on top of cardstock. That cardstock itself could be junk because if you're going to cover it, it doesn't matter. Or it can be pretty textured cardstock and you still see some of it and have the benefit of it. So think about using your book pages on tags and I also like to use book pages as pockets. Now I do that because obviously many times the book pages themselves are not the right size for your journal. So in this example, which is the one of the vintage journals I did last year, the page itself was too big and rather than just chop it off, what I frequently do is fold it up, glue it on one side so on the other side of this it would also be glued and I'd have another pocket and there's a tag with some of that encyclopedia paper on it and then that's as deep as you want it to be so measure it before you fold it but then you have a really nice robust pocket to slip a number of items in so book pages lend themselves really really well to making pockets a little bit different from putting a bit of extra paper on the corner which is an alternative way of making a pocket. So that's my suggestion number four and behind all of this you can see a number of envelopes which I've been really keen to get to to talk through because that's my fifth suggestion about how to use book pages in an incredibly effective and impactful way. I make envelopes of any sort of size and where the paper that I've got from books is glossy, so maybe very different from those books that I showed you earlier, and where they have gorgeous images, I just think it's absolutely necessary that we convert them into something that others can see. So I have a history of art book that I have been absolutely loving converting into envelopes, and Here's just one example of an image that shouts out when you make that into an envelope. So there's a few here that you can see in that sort of classical style. Children's books lend themselves really well to making envelopes as well. And just a little feast for the eyes. Here's a, a number of the others that I've put together just to give you a few 
examples. So a collection of poetry, children's poetry books with beautiful illustrations and I've folded them to make the envelope so that I do the best I can to use the image. So there's a few of those. I've used an old thesaurus and made a few little envelopes and they can be just tucked into pockets or maybe stuck to the inside cover of a journal. I've got a book about tennis that's all black and white and I just thought that looked nice as a little set in a collection. I've got a number of other children's books that I've converted into envelopes and then here's more of those history of art envelopes and you can make them in different sizes um, more arty, more children's book and then also I had a book about travelling around the world with some gorgeous images in so because it was wide rather than cut it down I've made those into jolly large envelopes so I'm sure I will find a use for those. So overall I had five big suggestions for making use of book pages in your junk and art journals. Clearly we have some ideas here but not all ideas so let me know your ideas put them in the comments below and if you have enjoyed this then please do hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell because as you can see we're having a lot of fun and I'd love to see you next week and with that I'll say have a fantastic week ahead and bye.